put on now so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. All right. So Steve, are you there? I'm here. Okay, good. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, I have turned on recording, so just want to make sure everyone knows that we're recording. Uh, and this, we're recording for educational purposes. We post these, post these so people can see examples of what this, this is like and they can learn from it. Or people who participate can go back and review it later because sometimes people need to do that to kind of understand more what was said and, um, and, and the recording is helpful for that. So uh, yeah, I just want to welcome everyone and acknowledge that uh, Bill and Carolina are experienced, very experienced facilitators also. And so either of you, you know, jump in anytime that you feel like you, you need to. Um, uh, let's go around and just, um, I know we, we um, said our names and where we're from in the other room. Uh, I like to just say one something personal <laughs> so that people get to know each other just a little bit before we jump into the empathy circle process. So maybe, um, uh, maybe just something that you really- Favorite food, favorite food. Favorite food, is that what you're suggesting? Okay, favorite food. <laughs> and I'll go first. So a favorite food of mine is, um, what is a favorite food of mine? Spaghetti. Okay, okay. mine is pierogi, dumplings. Okay. Anyone else? Well, bread and butter and coffee. <laughs> uh, uh, cashew soup. <laughs> Sally? Uh, yeah, I, I like Indian food and Thai food, if that narrows it down. <laughs> okay. Steve? <clears throat> Somewhat. I like uh, oysters. Okay. Wow. And Mary? You are muted, Mary. You there, Mary? I like vegetables and fruits. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so the topic of the circle today is um, how might we build an XR facilitators network. Um, and like I said in the introduction, one of the rules of the circle is you don't have to talk about the topic if something else is really alive for you when it's your turn to speak. And um, so usually the way I like to start the circle is um, I, I, am the, I become the first listener and uh, invite someone else to be the first speaker. And I will, uh, I think we're going to do, I said in the other thing that we would do three minute circles. Well, uh, he, that sound right? Or are you think four minute, Bill? He, he, uh, Edwin said four minute, but okay, we, can, minute. we can change that if we want. Four minute turns then. We'll do four minute turns. So who would like to go, who would like to speak first? Anybody? Sally? No, she just muted herself. Okay, well, should I go and just, we just model it? Sure, Bill. Okay, great. All right, so I'm okay. starting the timer. Okay, great. Um, so uh, building in the, the XR facilitators network. Um, well, first of all, uh, I unabashedly then put in a plug for these sorts of uh, listening circles. Um, because what I think that we need to do um, is to, um, we need to uh, establish common goals we, uh, worldwide. We need to establish common goals. And I think that the ecological si situation really lends itself to that. And then I also really uh, appreciate XR because we're going to be stressed and we have to meet the challenge of authoritarianism. There are two ways that we can handle this. We can, there'll be some sort of a, 
I'm sorry. So hang on just a second. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I'm holding everything. So okay. the first, the first thing you said, if if I'm hearing you right, mm -hmm. is that you think uh, empathy circles are a great tool uh, for creating mm -hmm. a facilitator's network, mm -hmm. and that you think that uh, we it's really important that we set common goals, mm -hmm. and that you think that um, climate change is a great um, context in which to do that to try to find commonality for people to work together is that right Mike? Did I get that? no that's absolutely correct okay. yes i was right. i was i was on a roll okay. um so um and and then and then beyond that there are two ways that we're going to be dealing with it either someone else an authoritarian you know is going to come over and then impose uh, really arbitrary restrictions on us and possibly, you know, uh, horrible, horrible uh, situations. Or we're going to have to learn to work in concert together, uh, value our commonalities, and overcome challenges together. So the second point I'm getting that you are making is that you see kind of two paths Mm -hmm. to creating a movement one or creating change one is more authoritarian and one is more community or de democratically based mm -hmm. and that you really you think you think xr is really more oriented towards community and that's what you would like to see also right in other words they're interested in, in gathering real data listening to people i don't and actually i'll just amend it by saying i don't think authoritarian is is a viable solution it's 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 absolutely just you know um, you know our death knell, it, because essentially authoritarian. If you look at the authoritarians, they don't deal with reality. I mean, I'm not talking about right or left wing. They're not dealing with reality. They deal with this sort of um, idealized God, man, child, you know, thing that, uh, quite frankly, just doesn't cut the mustard. We'll stop there. So, so you don't have. Much, it sounds like you're saying you you really don't have much faith in the authoritarian path. You've seen a lot of bad things happen down that path. You don't think that's the right path to go down. Mm -hmm. Too easily um, lends itself to ideological uh, perspectives that are not connected to reality and that wind mm -hmm. up with bad outcomes. And so you're much more in the uh, democratic path and people working together which is messy, but, you know, you think has, has better outcomes. Um, yeah, and I'll just finish up by that, uh, you know, and my experience in these rooms with people from all over the world is that, uh, oh, you like to breathe clean air? I like to breathe clean air. Uh, you like, you know, fresh water? I like fresh water. Uh, you love nature and love appreciation of nature? I love it. Uh, I think there's a lot more that connects us and, uh, I see individuals all over the world uh, trying to reach out to others, um, and I really appreciate it. Um, so I, I want to say that I appreciate all of you here and just attending and in being open. And then I'm done. Thank you. So in this last piece, you're saying that um, you really like this empathy circle process because you've had the experience of mm. being in circles like this and mm. talking with and being listened to and listening to others mm. and discovering that there is a lot of commonality uh that we all want clean air and we all want um fresh water and mm. that you, and that you have actually seen demonstrated that there's more that connects us than divides us and you really appreciate that yeah and the only minor modification I would just say is that, yes, within the empathy circle process, but also without it, uh, I don't want to, like, people don't gain their viability by doing this. I think it's an excellent tool, um, but I'm really struck and I appreciate the uniqueness that each individual brings. So I'm really appreciative. Thank you. Yeah, so you're saying that uh, empathy circle process is a good process for finding those commonalities, but it's not the only way. And, um, and you've experienced that other ways too. And you really appreciate that. Thanks Lou, I feel fully heard. Okay, great. All right, now my turn to speak and I will pick Steve. Will you listen to me, Steve? I'll do my best. Okay, thanks. Um, 
So when I so what's coming up for me when I when I think about scaling and building a a network of facilitators, um, uh, two things come up. One one is about um, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? So it ha uh, this is kind of a principle of nonviolence, which is I know is one is a core thing that that XR believes in, and that is um, that uh, creating change through nonviolent action isn't just about uh, obstructing and stopping things. It's also about creating. It's more so even more so about creating the things you do want to see. And so what I love about the idea of creating a facilitators network is that it's a constructive program. It's about building something that will generate something good. Um, yeah, so I'll stop there. Uh, yes, I, I guess, uh, first let me ask Lou, how, how often do we stop? I mean, um, so, I know there's like a four minutes because I was listening before and I, I, I just wanna make sure I do this correctly. So the, P, the the Go speaker ahead. the speaker can stop whenever they feel like they want to sometimes speakers get on a roll and they start saying a lot of stuff and usually what i'm doing is listening for when there's a couple of ideas have been expressed i usually can't hold more than that in my own mind so as a listener that's when i'll ask someone to stop and as a facilitator i track that also and if i think that's happening and the and the listener isn't asking the person to stop as a as a facilitator i'll ask the person to stop because it's usually hard to hold on to more than two two ideas you know once you get to a third it becomes really difficult in my mind okay thank thank you sure, um, sure. uh the uh right so you were saying lou that that that, that uh it, there's more than uh one way to respond to uh to, uh, to respond to, in this case, um, climate change as an issue or any issue. And it can be uh, reactive in the sense of uh, civil disobedience in a nonviolent way, uh, but it can also be creative. So reactive and creative being the two options there. One's passive and one's active. Yeah, thank you. Captured. Thank you. Yeah, the, the words that I think of are obstructive <laughs> and constructive. So one is about building things and the other is about non cooperating or trying to stop things. And I and I believe and Gandhi said this too, it's more important to focus on building what you want constructive actions than obstructive ones, but uh, usually both are some measure of both are required to create change. So I'll stop there if you could reflect that back. Uh, right. So uh, just confirming what you said. It's, 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 uh, I, did I capture it and just used it's it's another the word you like obstructive. I guess I like obstructive and constructive. That's also um, essentially the same way of, of uh, saying that. Uh, yes, creative. Yeah, create, thank you. Construct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So and then. Um, yeah, and in terms of building a facilitators network, you know, I think what we're doing here is kind of the way to do it, you know, in introducing people to um, processes, doing the processes, learning them by doing them, and then providing some kind of regular way to connect and share what we're learning about the how how to do those processes effectively so i think practice get, getting training in them practicing them and having a chance to reflect and learn with others i think those are important elements of of building capacity so lou i guess i i'm, I'm not sure about something you just said so mm -hmm. um I guess I'm going to have to ask for a clarification. Is is what you just described as far as 
facilitators being the ones to make it easier and to instruct or show or guide some type of action is that only for construction or also obstruction uh it could be either both okay mm -hmm. then yes that too both <laughs> what i just said uh as far as making it easier and instructing and guiding a process for obstruction or construction right okay so the end the um, yeah, so uh, what I was wanting to be heard for, I guess the main thing I was wanting to be heard for was that I think it, I think it takes training and practice and re time for reflection and learning uh, reflection in order to kind of build capacity for people to facilitate. Okay, and I guess that uh, what you just said at least to me, sounds like a community of practice for where people who would like to be facilitators can share knowledge and uh, collaborate and um, learn how to be better facilitators when they go out and help others. Yeah. So um, you're you're describing what you th you're describing. I, I well. Um, um so uh, can you can you reflect back what you heard me say because what i'm hearing you say to me is more like a some kind of a comment or a description of okay, what you I'm think sorry. the result i'm would sorry be. i guess uh yeah uh well a network or a group i, I used community of practice a community um a gathering of people who would like to be facilitators uh who would like to be guides um, we'll be able to be part of a network for improving, uh, yeah, the training that you described. Yeah. And the, so thank you. I was describing what I thought was necessary to help build that. But the point that I was making that I'd like you to hear is that I think it's really important to have to learn to build capacity by practicing, like we're doing here, and then by, uh, I'm sorry, getting some training, getting getting some practicing, which is the things we're doing, and then having also having a chance to reflect with others on how you're learning. That those that's kind of the key point that I was trying to make. Okay, and so uh, I guess it I, I I tend to fall. Another way to put that, I guess. To, other than repeating what you just said would be best practices for how to be facilitators, learning, being um, training, best practices in training, best practices in educating, best practices in the whole idea of, of facilitation. Yeah, thank you. Okay, your turn. Okay, so now I have to pick somebody. Yep. Okay. Um, how about uh, Carolina? Okay, I'm listening. Okay. Uh, I'm interested in uh, uh, this group because I, in my, as I indicated in my previous life, I worked for the federal government in the United States. And I'm also, well, I worked as an environmental engineer on various types of government projects. And it became apparent to me that as the public was involved in the, this, in the project that was being planned, like a bridge or environmental cleanup, that the science and engineering, the technical part was the easy part, and the hard part was engaging and explaining to the people who would be affected. Mm -hmm. So maybe let me reflect that. Um, so you are, you 
you join this call and you are interested in this the group because you you are interested in this process of listening and speaking and listening because uh, in your former life you were working as a government officer uh, or representative in some ecological field and uh, you discover during your work that the the easiest part is technical and kind of engineering part and the hardest one is connection with people communicating and understanding each other that's right that that captures it mm -hmm. and i in in my various experiences i noticed that there did not seem to be there was there were not enough resources for people who are convening public meetings to uh, be able to use as standard practices in different situations. It seemed that whoever was holding the meeting would make up what they thought without any, with only a vague sense of how to run a public meeting, mostly based on um, a lot of times based on uh, what it was like to talk at a kitchen table. Nothing more than that. So that's very, to me, is very frustrating that there aren't enough standard practices and also evaluation tools to see what works. Okay. So you were participating in different meetings or you were observing them and you discovered that there was no uh good how to say that um that facilitators whoever is hosting the meetings is not prepared to this role doesn't really know how to do that properly and effectively and it was looking like a, just a casual talk uh, around the kitchen table uh, and it wasn't effective in those issues you were dealing with That's right. Yeah. And this will be the last part, I guess, if I still have time, is that the that last part about evaluation. Um, I have gone to conferences and there are people who talk about best practices for public engagement. But it seems that nobody wants to evaluate. Everybody wants to be applauded for their approach without being evaluated, which is perfectly natural, I understand. Nobody likes to be judged. So, but that's the dilemma. I think if we can come up with evaluation tools about what works, then we can make progress. So you're talking also about the problem of evaluation during the, the process. You were participating in different, uh, uh, not just meetings with the local people but also in conferences different conferences and you notice that people want to be applauded but not evaluated in their work they don't want their work to be evaluated uh, and you see that it's not just about learning how to ho uh, host or facilitate meetings but it's also about kind of evaluating the process and the, 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 the outcome. Is that what you mean? That's it. Thank you, Carolina. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. So now it's my time to choose somebody. Maybe I'll, I, I, I will choose Alcides. 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 Is that okay with you, Alcides? Okay. I'll see this. Yeah, I'm listening. I'll see this. Yeah. I, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce properly, but it sounds beautiful. I'll see this. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, you yeah. said it right. Okay. 
I'm glad. Um, I'm thinking what was said until now. Um, that's interesting thing to evaluate uh, the process um, and how to intertwine the regenerative culture and kind of empathic listening and empathic speaking with the process of evaluation and not making people feeling hurt uh, how to do that because we need to evaluate the process or outcome but we don't want to feel anybody bad about it i stopped there so uh you say that uh you like this idea of intertwining the um, uh, the process of uh, developing knowledge and criticizing the, the process um, but you don't know how when you make a critique you will not uh, sort of uh, uh, make it more difficult for those who want to express i don't find the word now uh, to go on so when you are criticizing you are sort of uh, censoring or making it more difficult to eat the free is it uh, no. uh, well i would say that first of all i don't know if i like it i'm just interested in it <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And the other thing is that I would say different in different words, I would say that it's interesting the idea to intertwine the evaluation and the process of communication, proper communication, empathic communication, mm -hmm. and evaluating the outcome, and how to make evaluation not criticism, just evaluation but not critical. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you're interested in this uh, intertwining of the, uh, the uh, empathic listening and speaking. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, of uh, letting flow the, the the content of the topic and then evaluate it and go ahead uh with this topic without turning it into uh, something criticism in a, like in a bad sense something that will mm -hmm. uh okay stop this flow mm -hmm. if i understand mm -hmm. and another thing is i was thinking about what bill said that uh we all want a fresh air and all want the clean water and uh, i would add a beautiful landscape around us uh, we all want that but actually we have different ideas how to achieve that and when it comes to hierarchy hierarchy kills the empathic listening and empathic speaking uh, so for me uh, empathic speaking and empathic listening is a part of holacracy and sociocracy the idea of holacracy and sociocracy which is very important for extinction rebellion uh, so uh, you sort of agree with uh, this uh, what bill said that most everybody uh, likes this uh, clean water and clean air and but you uh, you see people uh, do not agree in how to get to it and that um, 
a way of building it is by uh, holacracy or sociocracy. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that if there is the, the uh, opposite timer, I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the thing is that uh, holacracy is opposite to hierarchy. In hierarchy, the empathic listening and empathic speaking is blocked. And it's integral part of holacracy. That's that's my connection. I'll see this. Okay, I don't I don't know the concept of this. Um, what you said, horizontal horizontal structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, I, 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 you will have to uh, make it clear for me. I don't know if I have time for that to. Uh, so maybe in the stand. next round, maybe in the okay. next round. Okay. <laughs> now it's okay. your turn to pick up somebody. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you too. So we'll go to uh, Mary's iPad. Are you there? Okay, I am. Okay. So uh, I'm here because uh, I see I, that I have to take part in several small groups uh, in a way where I can make uh, all my different uh, ideas and approaches to to be um, content. I don't know if this is the word. Uh, because uh, uh, mostly the groups, uh, activist groups, um, when uh, the issues grow on complexity, they uh, usually break in different groups. So, uh, and then uh, this is a problem because for me, uh, it's difficult to create this trans transversal uh, talk, uh, conversation, uh, exchange of ideas. And so, I'll see. Why don't you pause there and, and let Mary reflect back what she's okay. doing so far? What I heard you say was the reason that you are here is because. It's so complex that you need to be in several small groups. And I didn't quite understand that word when you put your hands out, but um, you need to exchange in the small way because you are interested in so many and they all need to be done. Um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm here to uh, learn a way of uh, helping uh, people in these groups mm -hmm. to uh, talk better, to dialogue, uh, exchange ideas, to listen. Uh, so uh, there is easier to uh, converge uh, mm -hmm. in, in the, the main things and do not distract in small differences. Okay? So pause, pause there. Go ahead, Mary. Okay, that you want to learn a way so that you can talk easier so that everyone can listen and um, to have the convergence of ideas easier is what I really heard. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um... I, I, I'm just going to add, I'll say mm -hmm. I, I think I heard you also say that you're experiencing a lot of conflicts in groups and oh, right. you're interested conflicts. In, in dealing with conflicts better. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's it. Okay. That's it. Go ahead. That's it. And um, just like to, to, to wrap it up. Uh, so uh, in this group, they do not know how to like, self-organize themselves. Uh, so easily they burn out mm -hmm. and in the opposite like the populists the authoritarian people they are simple 
and they join uh, a lot of people uh, easily uh, make keeping keeping the uh, keeping the goals simple. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, in this group, we have to have some. I think I heard you say that we need some form of better self organization, so that um, our ideas can be expressed easier, as with the populace, keeping it more simple. Is yeah. that what I, is that yeah. what Paul wanted to say that I heard? Yeah, yeah, it's right, something like that. And then, uh, so uh, to build this uh, uh, citizen assemblies here in Portugal and talking to different groups, and even in, in, inside XR, it's been difficult. So to learn how to to create these dynamics, this is why I'm here, okay. Uh, the reason that you are here is to try to go by the Citizens' Assembly and learn a way so that this can be effective and clear. Okay. Thank you, Alcides. Thank you. you. You feel hurt? Yeah, I feel. Okay, great. Mary, your turn. Oh my goodness. Okay, I will talk to Bill because I really enjoyed um, your first statement. And I think that if we could have a good umbrella of basics that people could agree on, that it would be much easier. Okay. So you're talking to me because you really enjoy what I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. Um, and but you but really what stood out to you um, is the idea of agreeing on some sort of basics, and that's that's what you want to focus right now. Right, I feel that um, citizens assembly is really working on doing that, and I love the last um, Lumio video that I connected with nine minute parts. It was some man on nonviolent communication, and I really did learn a lot of things, how we're just supposed to come from I. Um, so with your environmental concerns, I think over the board we can get to that stage. I'll stop there. Okay. So you were um, connected with a, uh, I guess, a, a video, nine minutes on Lumio, and a person was an expert in nonviolent communication. And uh, they said, start from the I, which I, I don't quite understand, you know, other than I, me. Um, uh, but you were, it was really informative. And so you're interested, uh, you learn quite a bit, and you're trying to take those nonviolent uh, communication skills out into the uh, world. Yes, I think that, that you heard me. It was actually a um, series. Each one was nine minutes. It was okay. fair lengthy. I stopped when the guy started playing the guitar, but I feel that there are um, issues in spite of differences that we all care about children. So, you know, something that's really a great concern. And I think that we, we have to see, I'm using we, but the I comes from feelings mm -hmm. from the nonviolent. It's I really it. yes. how I feel. And then if you would let someone else say how they feel, mm -hmm. I think grounds will be more similar. Okay. I'm so, trusting. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary, finish up. Just that I'm trusting that. I'm trusting in the goodness of mm -hmm. loving similar topics. Okay. So uh, at the base of this, I see that you have a, a real value about the uh, goodness of human nature down deep and uh that given the right tools and the right uh you know um then people will actually uh, choose a more cohesive or a more harmonious uh functional system and so when you describe the eye it's sort of like it's not um sort of an egotistical eye but it's like you come from the eye and you're authentic but you also have to let the other person you come from their eye and be authentic and then those things together 
uh, in um, uh, mutual respect and listening become a we, a functional we? I want. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay. 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 Anything else? I'll stop there. Okay. So you feel fully heard? I do. Okay, great. All right. Um, all right. And Sally hasn't had a chance. Sally, will you listen to me? You there, Sally? You're muted. And we can't see you. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Bill. Hi, Sally. Um, yeah, I'm um, natural resource planning background, transportation planner um, as an occupation, and want to hear what you have to say again. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and welcome. Um, so um, I'm hearing a lot of uh, things, you know, I, I, I agree with everything. And when I, the common core of what I hear is that um, people really want to work together. Okay, I'll stop there. Uh, Ray, um, you agree with everything and that you believe or hope that there is a common core of belief in a better um, environmental future. Well, I do, but I'm really talking about what I'm picking up in this group is that people want to work okay. together. People want to really work effectively as a team. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay. So you're just focusing on the group and that people in this group really want to, um, you know, work on this and um, that there's consensus of belief in um, agreement right. on everything that's being presented. Yeah, I don't think that everybody necessarily has to agree on everything, but people want to work together. Um, uh, when Mary mentioned children and I did my twinkle fingers, uh, I'm a retired special education teacher. So I have a long-term um, experience with the struggle of children, at-risk children, uh, challenged children, uh, to integrate into society. And so I feel their struggle to deal with a society that is vast and largely incomprehensible mirrors our own <laughs> that uh, a lot of things feel incomprehensible and so the key to that what i'm feeling here is working together effectively as a team uh, you may not understand everything but if you feel you have some teammates then you feel you have a chance i'll stop there okay you um want uh, people to work together and you believe that it's possible and you've worked extensively with special ed children which mm -hmm. can be extremely complex as to how they fit into society and um, you felt their struggle Mm -hmm. And um, which may be very similar to what we will be approaching with the, um, the group and moving forward. Thanks. I'll wrap up with this. You did really well. Um, the only, you know, um, slight correction I would make is that if I do want, you're correct, that I do want people to work together. But what I'm really picking up and what I've picked up before is that people want to work together. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling that. Uh, that isn't a personal agenda, I'll, I'll be that, but what I'm seeing is that that is shared and I'm picking that up from other people when I listen. They want to work together effectively as a team. And then I'm done. Thank you very much for listening to me, Sam. Okay. <laughs> Did you want me to reflect? Or sure, are you can done? do the, yeah. You can reflect just that little thing and then, then you speak and you choose someone. 
So, um, you just wanted to clarify that um, people want to work together. That's great. And, Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I feel fully hurt. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. So who would you like to speak to, Sally? Oh, so Bill, you weren't the one that was the environmental engineer? But I'm, yeah, was, I'm a little... Uh, that, was Steve. What was, that was Steve. Steve, okay. And then the guy from Portugal was... I'll see um, I, um, yeah, I, you, the, the guy from Portugal that I can't pronounce his name. I'll see these. Um, yeah, I want to listen okay, to you explain about the, the, the populist and how that applies here. So, uh, Sally, who would you like to reflect you back when you speak? Um, the guy I can't pronounce his name from. Do you like Alcides um, to reflect you? Okay, so Alcides is. Oh, that. that is that all right with you? I. Uh, okay. You okay? That's I'll, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do. My English okay. is not too good, but I'll try to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then uh, then another and another. The moment I, I explain Sally my uh, what I try to to say if it's not clear. So what is it that you want to say, Sally, on the topic of um, how we might build a facilitator network or anything else that you want to talk about? What what is it that you want to say now? Right. Um, I. Um believe that um, there's going to have to be this kind of um, check, you know, to make sure that um, after a, a sentence is completed or actually a paragraph that, um, you know, we're able to train um, and you know, in the expansion of the um, the the group's concept, um, that there is reflectivity, and that the um, concepts are um, understood in their entirety. Um, <clears throat> okay, why don't you pause? Uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't uh, reflect now. Uh, I will forget. So. You uh, would like to be sure that you uh, will get the tools uh, to facilitate groups so that they can uh, really uh, be uh, reflect or can uh, evolve uh, to what they really want to. Do I really, uh, I really missed uh, the end of it. Is that what you were trying to say? I, actually, it, I couldn't hear, but um, I think um, he understood. Okay. <clears throat> so um, then I um, think that we need to, um, Let's see, uh, uh, just basically um, integrate these opposing type of um, <clears throat> countries as um, we can that um, um, basically, I think that was what Maria was saying that no matter where someone is coming from that we allow them to be from their um, perspective, their place, and 
to listen to them fairly um, without, um, you know, bias um, and uh, so to let them pause? be her. Okay. Why don't you pause there? So you you say, uh, I understand you say like you would like to help to integrate oppositions or to make possible people from different backgrounds to uh, be respected and to be uh, to, uh, uh, free to express their ideas uh, in a respectful way. Yes. Yes, that is what I um, was expressing. <clears throat> and uh, I, as far as the um, populist situation with the simplistic point of view, and this seems to be a European uh, type of situation. Um, honestly, I just, um, <clears throat> well, um, a little bit concerned, but, uh, at the same time, um, don't understand it and how, um, we'll be able to approach these, uh, political dynamics. <clears throat> okay, so oh, go ahead, Alcides. So uh, you say that uh, this you believe this kind of uh, situation uh, where uh, populism, uh, simplistic views. Uh, impose uh, themselves uh, is a more European uh, issue and uh, that you and you don't know how to deal with it. Yes, um, as and, um, Sally, I don't know if you heard the timer go off. Oh, I heard some kind of splat. Okay, yeah, so the timer, the timer did go off. Okay. So are you feeling heard? Yes, I'm feeling fully heard. Um, okay. And yeah, for the... Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll see you. It's your turn again. Well, I don't understand why... Uh, don't we have to go back to the main room? Is it not yet a, no and we're so the idea yet? of the circle is the dialogue continues and people just keep picking and speaking oh, okay okay until, until I, I understood we had a, a time uh, to go back there okay uh yeah so, so I, think, uh, I think we have another 20 minutes or so i believe okay 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 so uh so my, who, would like, uh, who would you like to reflect you oh yeah uh so now i all ask uh, Steve to reflect me. Can you do this, please? Yes, I'll, I'll say this. Thank you. Uh, I, I listen to you very clearly, so <laughs> your, your, your microphone is good. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, I would like to, uh, going back to the point of the where Sally left the conversation. Uh, I feel we uh, who want to uh, who are for sort of pluralism or to allow different views uh, at the same time. Uh, easily cannot uh, uh, go ahead when things get too hard uh, and 
sometimes uh, split in different uh, approaches and, and then we get weak uh, when we have to face uh, a very simplistic view that is uh, easy to be um, uh, understood by the majority of people. So when we talk about majority and democratic uh, in this way, uh, we, we, we face problems uh, to go ahead with our uh, pluralistic view. Can I go ahead? Uh, Steve, why don't you reflect back what you've heard so far? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I heard that uh, the idea of uh, that we should work towards uh, pluralism, uh, which I understand to be the uh, diversity of viewpoints, different viewpoints, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, second after that, the idea that uh, to be able to, to continue uh, forward, I guess, as, as I understood it, even when, so we don't get bogged down, I'm not sure, I know I'll see it as a bogged down, uh, difficult situations when there's sometimes too many viewpoints, but to continue forward. And three, that um, I'm not quite sure on that, um, that the minority needs to be understood by the majority um, so that the majority doesn't uh, prevail just because it's the majority without understanding the minority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not clear on that, so that's what I... Uh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. Um, no, it's just that the... Yeah, the... Um, what's... I'm, I'm living in Portugal, but I'm from Brazil. Um, but I see here in many countries in Europe, this kind of thing uh, taking place. Uh, the uh, Not the conservative, but even the like regressive points of view, like uh, authoritarian uh, ideas spread more easily because of this, uh, the way they, they don't need, they, they don't need the, to, uh, they already have uh, a structure uh, like in system, demo, the social democracies, parliament and media, where these uh, ideas easily spread. And an opposite, we, uh, uh, the groups who want to uh, advance more um, progressive ideas uh, do not have all these tools, so they have to build these tools because uh, we depend on on the state uh, in, in, in a lot and uh, on the, the elections, and then in at this at this level, we do not we need a majority, so uh, we have to find ways of uh, make our, ourselves together, to this multiple voices, but also to make ourselves understandable for this, uh, like more uh, simplistic majority, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, for me, it's, that's okay. That's enough. <laughs> What are you hearing, Steve? That, oh, okay. Uh, that uh, it didn't use the word consensus, but I think, uh, in essence, it sounded to me like Alcides was saying that all these different uh, groups with different perspectives need to figure out how to see what they have in common and agree. On what on what they have in common, uh, which would be what what they do have in consensus. 
Is that what you were saying, Alcides? Yeah, yeah. That, that, okay. That's it. And um, also that we have to go one step ahead. That it's to find a way to be listened by this other uh, majority. But but it, it, I, I, I was, uh, I felt very uh, listened to your uh, understanding. Okay. okay. Thank you. Steve, your turn. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, picking up something there from what Alcides was saying is that... Uh, uh, who would you like to reflect you? Oh, right. I got to pick. Um, let's see. Um, uh, is, uh, oh, did my, oh, let's see. Um, I'm looking. You just muted yourself. I'm sorry. That's okay. If you were talking, I, uh, we couldn't hear you because you'd muted yourself. I, I muted myself accidentally. I picked uh, Mary to be my listener. Okay. You, you there, Mary? Is that okay with you? You there, Mary? Yeah. Okay. Not techno. <clears throat> okay. Yes, it is okay with me. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Uh, something that Elsie just was saying about, uh, at least what I thought he was saying, about reach, about how disparate groups are having a hard time uh, communicating and finding common ground. And I think that the facilitator training, as, as I understand it, would be as, as a facilitator in any type of group is to help people or groups or different perspectives to find that common ground. And it doesn't happen easily. There are methods and there are good methods and bad methods, and that gets back to the evaluation part to find out how it is, how we, how we can do a better job of communicating, but listening being the hard part of that, how to be better listeners. Okay. Um, are you ready? Are you done? Yeah. Um, okay. What I okay. heard you say that um, it's the facilitator's job to find and keep the common ground. And it's, 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 it's difficult, it's not easy, but that's where the evaluation comes in and that how we have to do it to do a better job. Is that basically what you said? Uh, except it, it is, except for one part, is that the facilitator uh, doesn't find the common ground. He makes it okay. easy for the other the other people. Plus, makes it right. Feasible. Okay. Yes. Yes. Makes yes, them, yes. and then they think they did it all by themselves. Oh, good. Okay. Good point. So you want to reflect, Mary, just that little bit that he was wanting you to hear? Well, I th yes. I think that the point of the facilitator is to move the um, conversation to hear everyone and yeah, to move it in the direction so that, as he just said, people discover it as the circle goes around themselves. Is that it, Steve? Yes, it is. Okay. Is there more you wanna say? Uh, probably approaching the four minute, but just the idea being that the essence, the kernel of it is that it's much easier to speak than it is to listen. And whatever practices, facilitators we come up with is that that, that is the underappreciated or underused, underpracticed aspect of, of, of that people in general need to do, and they're not used to it. All right, what I um, heard you say that the practice of listening is something that persons in dynamic facilitating groups are not used to doing. So it is, again, the job of the facilitator and all of us to develop the deep listening. Right, and just to clarify, it happens everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, I know. We're we're, uh -huh. So, 
yeah, it's a natural tendency that we need to learn better manners. And I think the facilitators need to, or the, the uh, explainer of manners. Thank you. I feel heard. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So, Mary, who would you like to listen to you? It, I can't even turn my um, thing up, but it was, um, it's not Sonia. Is that your name? Carolina? I, I, Carolina. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Hi, Carolina. Um, yeah. That has come up even in our group. And unfortunately, the group generally is of the same thought. So it's not as if we're out in the world with the really difficult, you know, issues that we're just practicing still because everyone agrees, say, whether it's an action or whatever. So one time when I was facilitating, I didn't really know how to do it when everyone just agrees and then, okay. And then I guess you need another problem to have a solution, but if there's no conflict, what do you do? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand you, uh, but I will try. So you talking about the process of facilitation and you considering the situation when everybody agrees and there is no conflict. So I'm not sure facilitator is not, the, the, the job of facilitating is pretty easy that, that, that that's what you mean i just heard the time move. no that wasn't the time no 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 okay. no no okay um unfortunately maybe i was i wasn't clear in what i wanted to say when there's no tension say uh the way that i learned it is someone has a problem it's not just a topic it's a problem they state the problem and then the facilitator has persons go around the circle and state what they want to say. And, um, you know, gen then you come back and the, at first the uh, proposer will put out something, you know, and then they're not allowed to comment the next time. But then finally they get around and they adapt a new idea. So I see 54 seconds. Um, <laughs> so yeah, why, don't you stop, why don't you stop there and let okay. Alina reflect back okay. what you're saying. Okay. Okay. So you talking about the process of sort of making decision or, or solving the conflict or solving the problem. So there is no conflict. There is a problem. Somebody states the problem. And there are rounds when people uh, talk about some different reactions or ideas they have. And that's how the pro, the, then they gave proposals and that's how it developed. That's what so, you So, mean. Carolina, I'm gonna stop you there because we only got 10 seconds. And I just wanted to say, I wanted to thank everyone for participating in this process. We didn't do it nearly long enough <laughs> for people to uh, 